Association with Pal Comics. Hey, the Harley Show. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my pal, Dave Evil over hey. here. Uh, <laughs> and our audience, Ray Chan. Yay! <laughs> this segment we're going to cover the X Men line of books, more or less. I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And so we got the, of course, Uncanny X Men, a book that I will admit I am quite enjoying. But it's really, really, really plot heavy, man. Great writing by Matt Faction. Great art by uh, Terry Dodson and, uh, I believe, uh, coloring by his wife. But it's a little heady. I went to go uh, review this book. I opened it up and looked at it and I was like, wow, there's so much plot here, I can barely remember any of this. So I gotta say, I think the best way to read these books is every time I've needed to go uh, read the latest issue, I have to go back and read a bunch more of them. I think this is going to come off way better in trade. And I think this is absolutely very intelligent, well-written stuff, but so plot-heavy that it's a little... I don't want to say convoluted, because that demeans it. It's not convoluted, but it's rich. You really got to remember a lot of stuff, and if you're stupid and smoke a lot of pot like me and take a lot of shots to the head, you might have a hard time with that. <laughs> you know, you know. But, well worth your time. If you like intelligent comics, this is worth it for you. But reiterate plot heavy and whatnot. Next up we got X-Men Legacy. This particular issue covers Charles Xavier going to have a meeting with his uh, brother Kane Marco, the Juggernaut. What was that famous line on the internet? Don't fuck around with the Juggernaut. I'm the Juggernaut yeah. bitch. I'm the Juggernaut bitch. Yeah, that's the line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it starts off with Kane Marco here, the Juggernaut's sort of uh, taken over a bar and he's being a big prick. And There's this great moment here where he just shows him how incredibly evil he is. Uh, oh, spoiler alert, I'll show you. If you don't want to see this, turn away right now, you cry babies. That I really like a lot. I actually shouldn't say that because the people I'm referring to could beat the shit out of me. Just <laughs> senselessly. They might even now. I might be a dead man. This might be the last show. <laughs> uh, but there's this moment where he just takes this poor little slob. And this is within the first three pages. Actually, it's in... Yeah, the first couple of pages here. He bring calls some guy over. Hey, buddy, what's your name and all this? And then just to prove a point to Charles, throws him up against a pillar. It's brutal. Crazy neat. In case you're wondering if he's a good guy or a bad guy nowadays, he's a total prick bad guy. Well worth the time reading. I really love, uh, love Mark Carey's take on the sort of exodus into Charles Xavier regaining his mind. And if you uh, like the Juggernaut, well worth the time. This reinstates the Juggernaut as an absolute bad guy. Good stuff. Cool. That was yeah. that. Next up we got Old Man Logan. I'm loving this book. Steve was a little meh with this issue. We had a discussion before this issue came out. Steve was like, I don't know if they should explain what happened to him, why he is the way he is. And I was like, have faith, Steve. It'll be good. Just before this segment, I was like, just read it. You'll love it. And he read it and he was like, well, I liked it. But I read a lot in here. Sometimes Mark Millar thinks he's a lot smarter than he is. But regardless of the nuances and the details. The reason that Wolverine has become a pacifist, as explained in here, was a great reason, despite maybe the actuality of how it happened maybe not being so plausible, the reason itself is fantastic. Would you not agree, at the very least, at that, Steve? He's like, I don't know. It made me angry. I'm just a cameraman. <laughs> but well worth your time. Uh, this storyline has been absolutely fantastic, and man, I mean, this, this art by Steve McNiven, just, just, it's completely fantastic. Completely fantastic. I don't want to spoil anything really about this book because it's very, very spoiler heavy. Well with your time, old man Logan. I'm enjoying the hell out of it! Next up we got X-Force, a book I'm really quite enjoying a lot. You go ahead, grab it. Check it out. <laughs> I wasn't talking about my penis, I was talking about the comic book. Yay! I, I do like it. <laughs> Next up we got X-Force, a book I'm really enjoying. Out of all the X-Men books, I'm finding this overall the most easy to absorb fun. The X-Force, of course, is the new X-Men faction. They have to deal with the most extreme situations, which means they go around killing people and stuff. And they all wear black outfits with gray. And this particular issue is covering uh, this basic storyline with uh, Warpath. He's teamed up with Ghost Rider to deal with some kind of weird spirit creature. And uh, then you got the rest of the team going out and dealing with all sorts of crazy bullshit, uh, largely involving the Vanisher. A lot of fun. Domino's on the team now. And the art is absolutely beautiful. I really recommend this book. It's also written by one of my favorite writers at the moment, uh, writing team, uh, Craig Kyle, Christopher Yost. Those guys are absolutely fantastic. They're writing a series called 
uh, X-Men Kingbreaker that I would be buying, but it's one of those books that Marvel's put out that's just a dollar more for no reason more than it just being a dollar more, which pisses me off. And I've been holding this up for a while, so I guess I should talk about it. Next up, we got Wolverine Manifest Destiny, and that actually is its name. In the last segment we did of covering the Wolverine stuff, I was like, that's just the X-Men stuff, it's not the name of it, but... Strangely, that is the name of the book, and at the same time, they've got this whole Manifest Destiny thing going on, whoopsie, in the X-Men book, so it's kind of weird to use the name twice. Now, I think this series is okay. It's written by Jason Aaron, who's a fantastic writer. He's doing amazing stuff over at Ghost Rider, and unbelievable stuff in the series called uh, Scout. But in this, eh, it's decent. I like the characters. The problem with this is, is it follows this basic premise that Wolverine needs martial arts training and he's got nothing anymore. But the guy has had so much martial arts training, it's ridiculous. It's been a long time theme of Wolverine, just trained up the freaking Yahoo. He's supposed to be the best there is at what he does, which, as Dave would like to say, is moving, but really we all know it's supposed to be killing. That's a joke reference, by the way, to his first appearance. He claims in his first appearance, and what I do best is moving. As Dave likes to yeah. always say, hey, yeah. you know, if you need somebody to help you with those boxes, getting stuff up a flight <laughs> of stairs, call Wolverine. Yeah. What he does best. <laughs> <laughs> but we all know the idea of the reason they use that nowadays is because it's supposed to be he's the best killer in the world, and you can't really be this great killer just because you got a bunch of knives attached to your hands. You know? Anyways, a good story overall, but it does demean the concept of Wolverine just a little bit, and assuming he's a clumsy oaf, and I'm not really down with that. But the antagonists are great. What you've got is a bunch of martial artsy mystic types, and that's a perfect group of antagonists for Wolverine, because they aren't what he's used to, and an adamantium skeleton, eh, it doesn't really matter if you can stick your hand through someone's chest like that dude from Raiders of the Lost, or uh, mm -hmm. Tomb of the Indiana Jones, or the Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom! Yeah. Thank you, audience member Ray Chan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>